Welcome to Krishna Kanta Hendik State Open University. Today we have with us Dr. Himlata Chari, Deputy Director Academic from the Mumbai University and today we will be discussing on online learning. Welcome ma'am. My first question would be, uh, what is the current scenario in the field of online learning in India, in your opinion? It's a very good question and let me just tell you that the, the scenario with the uh, coming in of online learning, the entire scenario, uh, not only for distance education but also for the conventional education has changed uh, very drastically. Uh, every university has tried to provide access through online in some way or the other. It had started with the online admissions and now you see that most of the courses are also offered online and that's why we have this flipped classroom and blended learning all this has come and it is taking a major change in the field of online learning. Uh, Ma'am, do you think in your opinion that when we talk of MOOCs and OER, they are the future of learning in this digital era? I totally agree. I am very much for OER and MOOC, but prior to getting into that, we need to uh, train our faculty, you know, train also engage them in activities so that they are able to adapt and accept that. Um, to engage them, each university and the presidents, I am very, uh, I would like to say yesterday's session, I was so happy that vice chancellor of this university has taken such a step to provide such access. I wish every vice chancellor, whether it be from a, a regular university or open university, take this and these are the people who would lead us to where we are in this area. Uh, Ma'am, uh, regarding to online learning, according to you, what are the opportunities and uh, challenges, if any? in this particular aspect of online learning? Um, opportunities are plenty. Today, uh, maybe the teachers do not have that much access of what they are learning, but the students are very much aware. The learners know where to get the material, how to access, and so many sites like Coursera and edX and um, MITs, they have all started this as a source, so it is very good sources that are available. But I would say right from beginning, be it online or MOOC or OER or such site, most important is training, next is infrastructure and motivation. Yeah. We have to motivate the faculties to get that because it is not difficult, it only has to be taking the plunge into the system. Yeah. And, and ma'am, uh, what do you think would should, should be the qualities of a teacher, particularly in this digital era? We are talking about uh, digital India, skill India. So in this particular uh, era, when we are talking about all these changes that are happening in the field of technology, how can a teacher, you know, uh, adapt himself in his role? The, as I said before, but one word I would use for everyone is openness. Unless you are open and willing to change, this cannot happen. So, it is just like the uh, this thing that keep pace or be replaced. Mm -hmm. So, this is the error of that which very well adapts to this and I think every teacher realizes that they need to have and each today if you look at it, everyone a farmer or a milk vendor or a shopkeeper, they all have mobile phones and smartphones. Yes. So, we have come into that era already. Yes. So, it is not very difficult for them to get. But all the time the teachers fear is the time constraint, uh, they try to withdraw themselves from situation. Uh, and again I would say the departments in the university should give such confidence and motivate them to get into that. And we have to learn a lot from the western world and we have to get yeah. amalgamated and interconnected with them. And I think that is the best opportunity for teachers and they all will do it. I think I could see that from yesterday's this thing, even the coordinators were very enthusiastic. Yes, they were asking a lot of questions on MOOCs and all. Yeah. I mean, again, there is another question like um, accessibility. For example, when you talk about online learning, you are talking about everything uh, which is technology oriented. But again, like in a state like us, where connectivity is a problem, so this question of accessibility is a 
uh, is becomes problematic at times. So, what would you? Um, I would again tell, I will give my own example in the state of Maharashtra also. We have rural places where the connectivity is an issue. I offer MA education, ICT. Um, so, I know the some of the students genuinely they want to learn, but because of access and sometimes they do not get the Wi Fi, and right at the time when they want to uh, up upload their materials, they are unable to do so. At that time, we have to give them some leverage. So, what I do is in my own example, I will tell is I call those people from the rural and I tell them to come to the headquarters and I train them there. So, then they get and nothing is impossible. We think access, access, but today with the digital efficacy, we are getting there. No more, we only used to look for you know the web parlors where we used to go, but the, each university sees that their center is well equipped right. and we have to um, give them the transition for the change in a very nice way um, understanding that we cannot impose I would say that you cannot impose on someone do this but we can really tell them try to adopt we, we are there to help you and each and every time a word of motivation a word of comfort understanding helps you to reach where you are. Exactly. And I'm uh, coming back to OER. Ms. Uh, what is your opinion on uh, quality issue regarding OER? For example, it's all about uh, all the resources being opened online for the students and learners everywhere. Then there is a, again and there another aspect to this particular uh, thing is like about quality. Will the quality be maintained? And how do you look into this? Mm, yes, I think um, actually if you look at it before, we have all of us access the internet and download some material in some form or the other. We, we do not label it as OER yeah. because OER has specifically have a licensing mm -hmm. and we look into that. Now um, coming to your question of how authentic it is, um, it depends on the teacher on how much to take. We know how much we have even if we used to access Wikipedia, we know some of them are not up to the mark so we leave it. And this is an area where you learn and share. You may get one point from which you can develop. I am not saying just adapt the resource as it is. Mm -hmm. And that is the main aspect of OER. They allow you to modify and reuse. Mm -hmm. So, this is not just take it and then use. So, you as a teacher based on your state like in Assam, what your level of teachers require or a student require, you adapt it and then you modify, you do not have to take it as is where, where basis, but you get a platform, something in a platter and then you can add, it is just like you know a salad, you have all the vegetables, you pick and choose what you want and then you add your garnishing as you want, you will not take the garnishing that others use. So, the OER for me is just like a platter of a salad. I mean, come, uh, and then uh, yesterday we were together for the session, uh, we had a workshop on counselling the counsellors and one of the major issues was less participants or a few number of students coming to the study centres. So, how would you motivate our counsellors in bringing the students to the study centres? Um, yes, I did discuss and I, I, as I said before, I really, really, I mean I appreciate the work of your Vice Chancellor, I, I, in fact I could not meet him, but I would say that he is doing a tremendous job because the number of participants who had come on a Sunday shows how the centre has coordinated with those, uh, uh, with the study centres and their coordinators. This has been a major issue across, it is not only in your university. Most of these students are working students and for a Sunday to come, they feel little, you have to really pull them out. So, to do that, I mean actually again I will get back, we have started induction program for students and we used to, have, I feel that we just have once in a while a tea session with the students and have them and do not treat them as students, they know much more than what we know and I feel involve them in activities and give one or two students to get the other students and I think you will win the battle. Uh. Ma'am, uh, that was it for today and we are very, very thankful to you for being with us and with this we come to the end of the discussion. Thank I you. also thank uh, KK Hanlick University, Open University for inviting me and all you people who have taken the lead and I thank all the people here 
who has given me a very good opportunity to share my views on this. Thank you.